So you know the footwork in the golf swing, especially in the right foot, I think it's super critical, big part of how successful you're going to be with your swing and your game. Uh, I think there's a number of uh, pitfalls, major pitfalls that you can get into if you're moving the right foot incorrectly. And I think there's one kind of magic way to move your right foot that really helps unlock the rest of the, the lower body and the way you go through the ball, um, help you hit it longer and straighter if you're doing it right. So right after this, let's get in a little bit into the do's and don'ts of what you should be doing with the right foot and ankle. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a mission to hit it longer and straighter off the tee. Longer and straighter just in general, all the way to the green because it makes golf fun. If you'd like to hit it longer and straighter too and you're on the same journey as me, um, head over to my website. I've got over a hundred articles and videos over there to help make you a better golfer. So today we're talking about the action of the right foot and ankle. Um, it's very specific and such seemingly such a small piece of the puzzle. Let's get into a couple of the ways that I see people moving their foot. I don't know if you call it incorrectly, but certainly less efficiently or less optimally. Number one is when people just take the right foot and they just lift it like this. Just a, just a straight plantar flexion which drives the knee out behind the ball towards the camera. When you do this, it's very easy, and I'm using my, my favorite uh, training aid here, this folding chair, to help illustrate what it's going to be doing here. If I do this, you see, number one, I haven't really shifted any weight, not very much. I mean, a lot of my weight can be supported. 50% of my body weight can be supported in my right instep, so it certainly doesn't force a transfer of weight at all. And what it does is it tends to, let's say move the chair around here so you can see me from this direction, it tends to bias you towards early extension or leaving the chair. It's almost automatic that you're going to, it's hard to keep my butt back as I'm doing this, but if we come all the way up, see I have to kind of get the hips and the pelvis involved in extending, creating a gap off of this wall and now you're in for some both power and big time direction issues. Um, so that's just a straight large plantar flexion. Um, your body will tend to get very tall and then your swing will tend to get very vertical like a Ferris wheel. Probably going to miss the ball wildly right and left and you're not going to be playing very good golf doing it this way. Most of the people that come to see me privately who do this um, are poorer golfers. There, very few of them are shooting under 90 when they do this. So if you're having a hard time with your direction and you're not that great of a scorer yet, I'd recommend that you film yourself from the down the line angle and check and see if you aren't doing this action all by itself. Another motion that a lot of golfers do that they probably shouldn't, it's very far from optimum, is they're going to allow the right heel to rotate counterclockwise around the big toe as the heel lifts. Something like this. So let's say that my big toe is at 12 o'clock and my heel is 6 o'clock so my foot is in the middle of a giant clock. So you'd have 7 o'clock here and 5 o'clock over here. And as I come down into the ball I'm going to let this foot turn this way. Heel's going to go behind the big toe and then up and over. It's the root of all evils for a lot of former baseball players who were taught to kind of squish the bug this way. And there's a reason you can do that in baseball and get away with it. But in golf it's kind of a poisonous move because of the way it resonates all the way up the body. So let's say I'm in good shape at the top of the swing here and now I start to go into this counterclockwise rotation with some plantar flexion. 
it's going to send my right shoulder over the top in a high position and it's generally going to get me outside the line cutting down and across too much which could either lead to a big time smother hook or it could lead to a big slice as well depending on what you're doing with your hands but it's very difficult once that foot starts getting counterclockwise like this it's very difficult for you to hit it for any accuracy at all or consistency and you certainly a lot of your power will get sapped with your foot going this way too um, very difficult to be a good golfer just from this one error alone it's kind of a poison pill or a death move in the swing throws the right shoulder over the top because the hip is also going with it let's look at it from the down the line let's say I'm in real good shape at the top now from this angle you're really gonna see the over-the-top nature as the hip goes counterclockwise it's gonna cause my hip to spin inside the barrel throwing the right shoulder over the top making me swing steep and across going through the ball okay now let's look at the right way for us to move our right foot or let's say the most optimal because you know in golf there's not a lot right and wrong it's more optimal suboptimal um, efficient not efficient a lot of gray area because you can't say that uh, great players like tiger or jack were doing something wrong uh, in their swings certainly they didn't have perfect swings but they had really good swings uh, efficient swings not perfectly 100 percent optimum but it means that they you can't say right or wrong you say um, more or less optimal i would say is a more accurate way to put it so let's look at a more optimal way to move the foot what we need to introduce here is an in roll now a lot of people say hey I, I try to do this and my ankle just isn't as flexible as yours well watch how i'm allowing the knee and the entire thigh to work towards the other thigh almost in front of the other knee like this see i can get this a long way but my ankle isn't really all that twisted you see it's almost still in neutral position here because i've gotten my hip my thigh all involved so what i like to see is about three parts in to one part up and then the second thing i'd like to see is i'd like to see the heel as it's lifting to be just barely in front of the big toe more target words so again if i'm on the clock here and my big toes at 12 and my heel is at six let's say as i move this foot in this way my heel is going to move towards 630 in other words it's going to move slightly clockwise more target words than the big toe you can see my heel is slightly closer to the target than my big toe this is going to create a chain reaction that moves up the body let's say i'm in good shape again and i move the foot in this manner it's going to encourage with the right positioning of the knee and thigh in response it's going to encourage my left hip to move more laterally and stay back notice how i'm actually going to be lifting the chair up as my pelvis actually moves behind me slightly encouraging me to maintain my posture all the way through and encourage my torso to unwind you see this motion does not encourage the torso to unwind nor does it encourage a lateral shift nor does it encourage the retreat or the backing up of the pelvis which most good players do again let's look at it from the down the line angle so say we're in good shape at the top now three parts in roll to one part lift so we're not going to be up here through impact we're going to be here watch how my rear can now lift the chair very easily as i'm posting up right to there from here we're in good shape to go through and release the club down the line with power 
Okay, let's take a look at a couple of shots at full speed first. Then we'll break them down, back down into slow motion so you can really get a, a good look on how my foot is breaking inwards this way as I'm hitting the ball. So I'd really encourage you the next time you go video or the next time you kind of self-analyze your swing, I'd love to see you give this a shot. Try to add a little bit more in-roll actually on both ankles. This one going back, this one going through in the combination with the lifting of the heel. Get three parts in for every one part up. What this does is, you see how this is exposes the spike under my pinky toe. I call this tra tra the, the uh, Trevino spike because this is the spike that Lee Trevino would expose um, to a camera from down the line every time he hit the ball. Is, I've got a photo up of that here. You can see what I'm talking about. The, there's so much in-roll that the pinky toe spike has been revealed to the camera and the entire um, print on the bottom of the shoe you can see this way as the heel works in front of the big toe. Um, including Trevino, you've got the entire uh, real Mount Rushmore of the greatest golfers of all time. My top four, I don't know how you could even argue with the top four. It's Nicholas, Tiger, Hogan, Sneed. Those are the, easily the greatest four golfers in history. All of them made this move. Um, the older three their entire careers and Tiger modified his motion after he came back from all the back problems. Now you see him doing more of an in-roll on this foot which is allowing the body to open up a little easier and maybe take some of the pressure off his spine. Who knows? But he's doing it now. Obviously Trevino did it. I bet Palmer did it. All the greatest golfers in history did this. It would be wise of you to analyze the way your right foot is moving and see if you can start moving it just by practicing at home. You can instantly start to feel how it opens up the left posting move of the hip and the opening up of the torso as you go through the ball. And that's what, you know, a lot of people who come to me for private instruction, they don't have enough of that usually. They don't have enough hip posting. They don't have enough torso turning before impact and it gets them in, pr in trouble not only with their direction but their power as well is just not optimized so hey thanks for watching i hope you'll give this new idea a try um, if you do and it works or whatever happens i'd love to see you come back and leave a comment in a week or two down below and let us know um, what you experienced uh, once you gave this a try uh, Hopefully it's going to help a few people out there and uh, I'd love to hear about it. Hey, thanks again to everybody at Golf Development Complex in Moorpark, California for hosting us today. It's a wonderful facility to practice and hit balls at. 
beautiful scenery of course in the distance and hey if i don't see you in the next video i hope i see you longer and straighter down the fairway <laughs>